do you think is more likely to take over the world, AI or ants? The answer seems obvious, but don't underestimate little insects. These hardworking creatures can lead to a real apocalypse thanks to their collective intelligence and superior numbers. There are 8 billion people in the world, and for every inhabitant, there are about 2.5 million ants. These insects are about 20 quadrillion, which is 20 million billion. This number may be much larger since scientists can't calculate all of them. They live all over the world on all continents except Antarctica. They can survive under challenging circumstances. Ants live in large colonies and can repel an enemy's attack. But the most remarkable thing is that they're highly organized creatures with strong social mechanisms. Ants are more like humans than chimpanzees and other animals. Of course, they're very different in appearance, but look at their lifestyle. They can create roads and traffic rules to efficiently construct a colony. They distribute the labor force and have separate detachments to protect the colony from enemies. They can also send chemical signals through the air and warn their friends of danger. When they find something valuable and big, they leave traces of pheromones leading to the target so that other ants can detect it. The larger the colony of ants, the more aggressive they become in defending their territory. Some colonies may have up to a billion workers. It's like a giant modern megapolis with its laws and rules where each ant performs a specific function, like a gear in the mechanism. If ants suddenly feel danger from humans, they'll find an effective way to fight us. And the mayor of this mega city is the queen. It's a giant female ant that lays thousands of eggs. So while you're fighting one colony, the queen will create two new ones. Her offspring are ready to give their lives for her, and they guard her as the most valuable treasure on earth. There are special ants designed to protect the queen. These insects are bigger, stronger, and more dangerous. They're like bodyguards trained to repel enemy attacks. By the way, not all ordinary ants are so tiny and harmless. For example, one fire ant can cause you a lot of trouble thanks to its powerful jaws and venom. It's called this way not because of its orange appearance, but because of the burning sensation its sting leaves. Now imagine what can happen if billions of ants start filling city streets. And they don't even need to be inside cities to cause problems to people. Ants are already causing enormous damage to nature and the economies of many countries. In Australia, they have already become one of the most dangerous invasive species. And recently, fire ants have established their colonies on the European continent. The long lifespan of ants worsens the problem. For example, queens of some species can live up to 30 years. This is a long time considering that many insects only live a few days. Not only social engineering, but also physical strength makes ants a dangerous species. One worker can lift a weight 50 times its own. In a sense, this is a superpower. Let's take an average grown-up woman weighing 130 pounds and give her the power of an ant. Now, she can lift any object weighing 6,500 pounds. She can easily remove an SUV from the road just with her hands. Yeah, ants are tiny and their superpowers are insignificant to humans. But only if we're talking about one ant. What if there are a million of them? Let's imagine that ants decide to destroy humanity. How can we fight them? The most obvious way is to send a dangerous parasite or bacteria to their colonies. The plan is good, but ants are ready for it. There are special sanitary detachments inside colonies. If an ant gets infected, the orderlies quickly neutralize it and take it outside the settlement. Then they treat the contaminated place with an antimicrobial agent to prevent the disease from spreading. This kind of protection resembles the work of our immune system. Human cells attack infected cells and destroy them. Ants do the same thing. They don't care how many workers are infected. They will protect their home at any cost. All for the colony. All for the queen's safety. Ant populations are overgrowing, so they constantly need new territories to spread. And they find them quickly, thanks to people who unwittingly help ants travel across continents. A few ants with a queen can get into a box of bananas through a small crack. 
Then they wait for the ship to take them to a new shore, where they quickly create a new colony. This is how most ant species have spread all over the world. One of them is the Argentine ant. These small carnivorous insects lived in Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay subtropics. But later in the 16th and 17th centuries, they managed to penetrate the territories of Spain, Europe, and America. All thanks to Spanish conquistadors who came to the jungles of Brazil and Argentina to find El Dorado. They entered the subtropics where they experienced increased humidity and rain. Their moist equipment became the perfect place for Argentine ants to create small colonies. When the Spaniards set off on a return journey, all these ants got on board and did their things unnoticed by people. The conquistadors had a very tough voyage because of intense storms. For several months, they wandered the seas. Among raging waves and winds, the ants survived thanks to the competent allocation of resources. Thus, when the Spaniards arrived home, they also brought these uninvited guests. But the real dawn of ant colonies was the time of the New World. After Columbus discovered America, more and more ships began to travel there from all over the world. And many types of ants joined these trips. Now they are one of the world's dominant species, but not all ants are pests. These tiny, hard-working creatures are great helpers to nature. They perform essential functions in many ecosystems on the planet. They may be as important for nature as well as bees pollinating plants. One of the main jobs ants do in forests is the processing and decomposing of organic substances. They clean and fertilize the ground, thus improving the soil health. Ants transport seeds of trees and plants, helping them spread throughout the forest. They also fight other insects that destroy vegetation. For example, in China, some pests spoiled the harvest of citrus fruits. To effectively combat them, people started using ants. This method was so effective that people have been using it for centuries. Some studies show that predatory ants are better at fighting pests than agricultural chemicals. These creatures also cooperate with other insects. Some ants take care of caterpillars of a particular type of butterfly. This means that if ants disappear, many butterflies will also vanish. Scientists have recently found that ants' evolution is closely related to the evolution of plants. Plants have developed unique mechanisms to keep ants close. For example, they secrete sugar water or create a special chamber inside the trunk where ants can live. In return, small insects protect plants from pests. Some species grow mushrooms. Some aggressive ants exist to capture other ants and make them their workers. And there are thousands of such connections. We still don't know the whole picture of the relationship between ants and the rest of the world. By starting an active campaign against ants, we risk harming ourselves. There are about 12,000 species of ants on Earth. This is one of the most diverse and numerous groups in the wild. They live everywhere, from the Arctic to the tropics, and in all places they are an integral part of ecosystems. This puts humanity in a rather tricky position. All that is left to do is hope that nature will find a balance and solve the ant problem.